Hi Virgo, thank you for joining me. I want to, um, if I didn't upload, uh, piece together a video already, I want to say that, um, I apologize for not getting your videos out. I didn't get any of the earth sign videos out for October because I had, my readings were a little longer than usual and it was my birthday month, hey hey. So, um, you know, I had a bunch of social obligations. I was really appreciative of my friends for, you know, taking me out and everything. But anyway, it was a really busy month with um, Halloween and birthday and I'm just really very sorry. And so to make it up to all my earth signs, I'm gonna give you guys a bonus reading for November. So please forgive me because I love you very much and I am going to try to make these readings uh, super good to make up for it. So let's get into your spiritual message. You have the angel Maya, and Maya says, Schooling, study, and education help your life's purpose and personal growth at this time. The angels will guide you and help you through with this po help you with this process. So let's see. The extended message. I usually, I've been putting them face down to do this big mystery reveal. Oh, but they fell out on their own accord. So, never mind. Okay. Uh, I'm doing this late at night, so I hope I can deliver the most articulate message to you. But I feel a little, like, sleepy. I try to do these readings whenever I've had my coffee. So, please forgive me if my words are jumbly. Maya goes on to say, We strongly recommend that you continue with your education because the additional information and experience will accelerate the fruition of your life's purpose. You may worry about having the means to go forward with this schooling, but we assure you that everything will be provided to you along the way. This educational process brings you great rewards. It enriches your understanding of your spiritual power and accelerates your memory and motivation towards your life's purpose. We will guide you to teachers, schools, books, funds, schedules, and all of the resources that are plentifully available to you now. So if you are not actively going to school, going to university, going to, um, you know, a school school, if you're not in school or you're not even planning on you know, going to something like that. This could just mean like life lessons, like school of life. But it can also just mean, you know, um, a lot of us think that education stops when you reach 18 or when you um, graduate from college. But really, I feel like you should continue your education throughout your whole life. Like education is more of a process than it is a... Um, a to Z point, right? Because we're always learning, we're always gaining new knowledge. So it doesn't necessarily have to be um, it doesn't necessarily have to be like buy your textbooks or, you know, take a test type of school. Um, but it could be like a cooking class or like I knew a Virgo who was doing Toastmasters, right? So just learning, just um, taking um, taking courses and uh, doing activities that bring you more knowledge, right? That... Um, that help you learn and help you grow. So, if it's not direct schooling, then try to think outside of the box. Spirit, 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 thank you. Please surround us with the warm, white, loving light of God. Please give us God-given messages for Virgo and all those who love Virgo. The highest good of all. Could you clarify masks and the hanged man for me, please? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. One more. Could you clarify the masks and the hanged man for Virgo and all those who love Virgo? The king of swords. So you could be dealing with a Libra, Aquarius, or Gemini. 
Um, but let's see. So masks paired with the hanged man. The hanged man is a card about sacrifice. It's a card about waiting. It shows a man who is hanging from a tree by his foot and all of his money, all of his possessions in his pockets are falling out. So he's sacrificing a lot, right? And his arms are tied. He's hanging upside down. And as he's hanging upside down, the blood is rushing to his head and it is creating this aura around his head, so he's gaining this new found enlightenment, right? So, I'm a little confused about this masks compared with, or this masks paired with the hanged man. So, let's move through these other messages and maybe I'll pick something up, especially with school. School masks the hanged man. The hanged man is waiting and sacrifice. Perhaps you want to get to the end um, and school feels like this suspension period that's like, oh, when am I ever going to get done with school? For those of you who are students, maybe you're putting on this happy face of, yeah, I'm a college student, but you're like... It feels like it's taking forever. The Two of Wands is a card about planning. It's about putting your dreams into motion. And in this particular deck, we have a woman who is um, either a ghost or <laughs> the door is like an illusion because she's halfway in the door and halfway on the other side. She's popping one leg out and her uh, upper body out, but her butt and her other leg is on the other side. So it's a very interesting card in this deck. And that could be... I'm seeing that's kind of the mask. This like one foot in, one foot out. Not quite there. Um, not quite in one spot. Like in two spots at the same time. I hope some of you Virgos are getting something from this because I am... I hope you're getting something from this. Let me know in the comments. But it's a card about planning. It's a card about, you know, when you're undergoing school, when you're undergoing university training, higher education, it is a look at your future because it is gaining this knowledge to use it in the future for some for some purpose, right? And it might seem like you're not going to use this knowledge now, so it's like you're in this waiting period and the knowledge hasn't quite um, been put into practical everyday life but it's a mask you know it's like um, I'm thinking I'm sorry I'm thinking of Harry Potter <laughs> so I hope some of you are Harry Potter fans I've mentioned this in two other <laughs> videos about Harry Potter. I know I'm a Harry Potter freak, but I hope you guys are too. So I'm thinking of whenever um, Dolores Umbridge comes into Hogwarts and she changes the curriculum and she says that the dark arts are um, going to be more of a... Um, it's kind of like changing from critical thinking to really um like rudimentary learning like uh uh memorized um type of learning it's like they needed training in the dark arts so that they could prevent themselves from the dark arts and they needed to practice like they needed to practice the cruciatic curse or whatever um but Whenever Dolores Umbridge came in, she only wanted to study by the books. She didn't want to do any, like, hands-on training. She thought, or I guess the administration felt like 
they could learn everything they needed to know about the dark arts through words, through textbooks, but it actually takes putting those plans into motion. So I feel like this waiting period is like, you feel like you're not really learning anything because it's just tests and quizzes and it's not like practical real world things, perhaps. In any case, let's move through the cards. So we have the Four of Cups, and the Four of Cups in this deck, it's usually a sulky butt card, but in this deck, the Four of Cups symbolizes, like, boredom and laziness. It's this guy with a fat belly, eating potato chips, watching TV, and he, you know, it's very, like, gluttonous, and he has a beer and a bowl of ramen or something on the floor, and reversed, it's good because it tells me that someone is not lazy. So, I feel like your attitude in this situation is that, um, like, you are seeing the learning opportunity in it, and you're not being lazy about it, and you're being active, like, proactive about it. At the end, we have the King of Swords. And again, you could be dealing with an Aquarius, a Libra, or a Gemini, or this could be your energy. The King of Swords reversed is a man who is very unforgiving, very unmerciful, very like um, cold, cut and dry, uh, blunt. And so, like, if someone comes to him and, um, the King of Swords to me is, like, the judge or the, like, military general. So, if someone comes to him with excuses, um, he can be a very, like, cold-cutting man and this could be a man or woman, but he could be a very cold and cutting person and just kind of be like, well, tough titty, you should have done it this way, right? Well, too bad. Um, these are the rules and you broke them. I'm not going to analyze that anymore because I feel like Virgos will get that and I don't want to stretch anything. So again, let me know in the comments because I would like to piece this together more. Now on to your money, career, and health messages. We have pessimism with judgment. So that kind of concerns me. When I was laying down the um, cards of well-being, the cards of well-being are more like uh, clinical cards. So they're very good for skeptics and atheists and non-believers in all the, you know, higher being uh, the other side and... Um, God and angels and demons and all that stuff. So they're very good with that. And um, we had masks. That's not very Virgo, but we had pessimism and underrating. And I just thought like, oh, that's Virgo. <laughs> like I can like feel um, two very Virgo energies to me. So we have sad embrace and it shows like a blue fairy and she is sad and holding her face in her knees and it's she's on maybe a ledge and there are clouds behind her with the night sky and a really bright moon so sad embrace says 45 and remember this is in your money career and health Sad Embrace says, Loss is a part of life. Let go and allow time to heal you. You may be entering into a period where a loss is a theme. Perhaps you're having to let go of a long-cherished dream. 
If so, take heart. So this for this ending may have been for your highest good. A better and more powerful dream will be realized in your life if you can accept the loss. Relationships based on faulty foundations are meant to end at this time. Disappointment is a form of perception. If your expectations weren't met, a sense of loss arises along with sadness and grief. Express these emotions. Tears are like healing rain that can restore life to a parched inner landscape. Growth is always assured. Whatever the loss, however great it is, let go and experience your feelings so that you may soon see the beauty that lies ahead. So this might be like a career goal you had and it didn't work out or it didn't work out the way you had hoped. And so just embracing that pain Embracing that loss, that professional loss, might be something to look into. And we have pessimism here. So pessimism with this loss. Um, like, just know that this loss is not permanent. You know, like, this loss is... We all have losses and we all have gains. And you'll surely have gains in the future. But, you know, perhaps... Now is not the time. And um, you could be suffering like a financial loss. And um, I'm very sorry for any of these losses. Um, you could also be suffering um, a sudden loss of health. But in any case, the pessimism card is paired with judgment. And judgment is a card about... Well, making good judgments, right? But the deeper message is Archangel comes down and he blows his horn. He heeds the calling or he blows his horn and gives you the calling. And he says, do you want to stay on earth? Do you want to stay in all this pain and suffering and this hell? Or do you want to come up with me to heaven and elevate to the next level? So whenever judgment appears it means that there will be an event in your life or there has been an event in your life we have a dove of peace right here but there is an event in your life that will call you to elevate to the next level so you can stay in this pessimistic mindset or you can graduate on to the next level you can uplift yourself you can elevate spiritually or you can stay down on this hellish earth and i mean it's like um spiritual ascension um 5d and all of that stuff so just know that this loss is part of that ascension and um to Whenever you hear the call, like, rise to the occasion, right? It can also mean bringing something back from the dead. So you might be going back to an old job. Um, you might actually, some of you might be experiencing, like, near-death experiences where you die and come back to life. That would be really interesting. It gives you a new sense of life. But let's see. Spirit, what are the messages? The money, health, and career messages for Virgo and all those who love Virgo. Spirit, thank you, thank you, thank you. Could you clarify for judgment and pessimism for me? Ooh. One more. For Virgo and all those who love Virgo. We have the Queen of Pentacles reversed. We have the star. I like it. And we have the Nine of Cups reversed. So you are going through a rough patch. We have the Queen of Pentacles reversed. And the that's most likely you. But it could be another Virgo or a Taurus or a Capricorn in your life. But it's an Earth sign nonetheless. And when the Queen of Pentacles is upright, this is someone who... 
is a master of her resources. So she um, is the divine feminine energy of the earth element. So she receives resources, right? She receives whatever is given to her and she multiplies it. She nurtures it and she multiplies it. And she delegates her tasks to her little helper elf friends. And she sits on her throne and she is smart with her money. She is able to provide for her necessities and for her luxuries. When she's reversed, she's having trouble multiplying her uh, resources. She might there might still be abundance, there might st or there might still be resources, but there might not be the abundance that she tends to create. So you might still have a paycheck coming in, but it's not enough to give you those luxuries. You might have a paycheck coming in, but you still feel like there's not enough time to really enjoy the fruits of your labor. But we have the star here. We have two wish cards here. This is a little um, troubling, but nothing to um, worry about. Um, you can turn it around. So we have the star card here, and the star card to me, you could be dealing with an Aquarius too, especially since we had that er, that air sign. But the star is, to me, something that's faded, something that's destined, and it's definitely something you wish for, something you dream for, because your inner knowing knows that it's for you, knows that it's faded. And it's about our, the constellations, the wishes, um, wish upon a stars that are in the sky, right? And it's all about orbiting in the right time. It's about divine timing. So sometimes, um, this is a card about hope and faith too, so sometimes the our wishes might not come in the right amount of time that like um it might be slower you know because sometimes divine timing is slower than human time than what we would want it to be but it's all about when those stars orbit at the right place at the right time and then you will get this dream then you will get this wish you will hear the calling and you will rise up from this sad embrace right so it's all about when the right stars line up but it's destined it's gonna happen whatever dream in your career in your money it's going to happen it's all about timing um, this may also talk about healing the star can be um, healing she's the water bearer so you might be healing these financial issues at this time and part of that is to examine your pain because if you don't examine your pain then you're going to make the same financial mistakes. But um, I also uh, have to say that um, judgment can mean music so you might get messages through music. Um, the next card that we have is the Nine of Cups reversed, and the Nine of Cups is a wish card, but reversed, I feel like it's um, it can be the fat and happy card, too, so it can be overindulgence and um, excess, you know, eating too much, drinking too much, um, just too much, um, anything that is... Um, kind of a, an emotional safety blanket, uh, maybe even too much sex or too much online shopping or something like that. So just be mindful of that and just know that any excess you experience, I mean, it's okay to be sad. Definitely don't self-medicate, but any excess that you surrender to is going to slow down this process of generating abundance for yourself. So... Really, um, you know, it's okay to, like, do it every now and then. But just slay your roll, slay your roll. Okay, for your love messages, we have underrating and the five of staffs. So, you might, excuse me, if you're single, you might be on the dating scene. And you might feel like you have a lot of competition. 
and you might feel like you're not worthy of your victory, right? So you, you might be fighting off a lot of people to get to the one person that you want and this might be affecting your self-worth a little bit. Let's see what your oracle has to say. Oh my gosh, this is so, this is exactly what I was just saying. I love it when tarot does that. Okay, so we have 39 and it says be authentic to who you are. So you're underrating yourself. You have all this competition and, you know, you might feel like you have to be someone else, but it says be authentic to who you are. You are asked to be real and true pertaining to who you are and how you feel. See, like, you're underrating yourself, but you just need to be you, Virgo. And if people can't see, like, people can't see and love your authentic self, then those aren't your people. But plenty of other people will, what am I doing? Plenty of other people will love and appreciate you. So, anyway, okay, let's see. This could doesn't always have to be, um... Uh, like romantic love it can also be family and just personal life friendships and all of that but um you know your intimate relationships so be authentic to who you are goes on to say in all relationships authenticity is important sometimes it might seem easier to stuff our feelings and do something that we normally wouldn't do be candid and be who you truly are other Accept others for who they are and don't feel the need to change yourself or anyone else. Mm. Also, I will say, you know, it says um, don't change anyone else. And I feel like um, some Virgos try to change me. <laughs> like, Virgos have dated. Virgos can't change me. So, you know, they want like perfection perfectionist and it's all like in good spirit I'm a Virgo moon so I get it but be authentic to who you are and let others be authentic to them spirit 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 thank you thank you thank you please surround us with the warm light loving light of God please protect us from all who seek to do us harm please give us God given guidance for Virgo and all those who love Virgo for their love and personal life spirit could you provide us more information about underrating and the five of staffs for Virgo and all those who love Virgo. Spirit, thank you. What are the messages for underrating and the five of staffs? Ace of Chalice is reversed. Justice. And the Hierophant. Ooh. So. Excuse me. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So you might be dealing with a Libra. We have Justice here. You, and you did have that um, King of Air, remember? So uh, Aquarius or Libra. You might also be dealing with a Taurus. We have the Hierophant here. In any case, you may be competing with a Libra and a Taurus. But the, we start with the Ace of Chalices. And the Ace of Chalices, I like it in this deck because it's a baby baptism so sweet they're in a pretty church and little babies getting blessed so sweet so the ace of chalices is a new emotional beginning it's joy it's like the potential it's like a new potential for love like everyone loves a baby right i love baby every time a baby smiles it's like instant joy and that baby has the potential to be a really good person, right? But, reversed, it also has the potential to be an asshole. <laughs> so not all beginnings, not all emotional beginnings. Ah! And, um, excuse me, my foot's falling asleep, so I'm trying. Um, so not all emotional beginnings are lead to... The best outcomes but whenever I see the ace of cups reverse especially in this love reading it's like a false start something that hasn't quite got off the ground something that you wanted to get off the ground and 
the cup just spilled, right? Um, so you may have um, recently had a crush on someone or started dating someone and you thought like, man, this is the one or, you know, you felt those butterflies and you felt those feelings and then perhaps you were faced with some competition and the cup spilled over. So you weren't as enchanted with them, you weren't as attracted to them, and it just kind of soured the experience, right? I do see you moving into energies that are really good because with Justice and Hierophant, that tells me that marriage is possible. Um, so while it might not seem well, it might seem like your cup is spilled now. It's perfectly refillable. And, you know, justice is contracts at the courthouse. The Hierophant is traditionalism in the temple. Justice can also speak of karmic justice. So, the situation might not have seemed fair, the competition might not have seemed fair, but quite possibly it was in your soul con contract, like you signed up for that before you even incarnated. And as a result of all your heartbreaks and all your sh um, all the missteps in love and romance, Perhaps the, uh, perhaps karmic justice is finally coming around and you will reap all the rewards for putting in the effort on people, for loving people um, who didn't return your love. So perhaps this justice is saying that your time has finally come, your Justice is finally being served. Whatever you, whatever love you, you've you experienced, you will be rewarded with that love. And it will probably be very traditional. If you are dating around and you're coming up short and your cup is spilling over, this is telling me that you need to take a more traditional approach to be very direct in what you want to... Um, not be, to, to have a very direct plan, you know, typically marriage, typically um, something conventional, something traditional, something that is very well known that others um, can identify with, that everyone can identify with, and make your boundaries clear, um, make your you know, deal breakers and turn-ons clear as far as, you know, commitment turns me on or I am looking for a serious relationship. If you are not, then, you know, it was nice knowing you and I hope we can align with people who are more suited to each other, right? But I think, I, I'm feeling like this is saying, like, don't chase people who don't share the same values with you or don't have the same, oh, oh, excuse me, life goals. I also see these sheep and I feel like, like you should be shepherded by your heart, right? Like led by your heart, like a sheep. Or like your heart will lead you, like your heart is shepherding you. Sweet, sweet. Okay, let me see if I get any additional information from here. Some of you could be um, getting pregnant this month, celebrating a new baby. Um, you could be giving birth. So pregnancy, giving birth, celebrating a child. It might not even be your own. I'm hearing a godparent. So you might be um, at another 
uh, like at a friend's or like a family member's baptism and they decided that you're going to be the godparent, which would not surprise me because Virgos are very responsible and I would want Virgos to be my godparent. You might be keeping your resources a secret, like um, living way below your means. I'm thinking of a um, couple... It was the parents of my mom's friend growing up. And my mom's friend was like a big gambler. She still is. But um, her parents, they lived in this like, they lived a couple blocks from us actually. And they lived in kind of, I don't want to say a dump, but it was definitely not a palace. And then years later, I found out that they were loaded, but you would never know because they didn't flash their money. So I feel like maybe there are some of you Virgos who have more money than you're letting on, which, hey, I feel you. I feel you. Some of you with this wish might be, sorry, some of you with this wish um, might actually be lazy on your wish, and uh, and this is for some of you. I feel like in the general reading, this applied to more Virgos, but these this last bit of the reading where I look at cards this way, they're for more um, they're more fine tuned. So this is only going to be for a few of you, you Virgos, but I feel like you're sitting on your butt and you're wishing for like. A legal system to just grant you your wish because they like you or like I'm feeling like um, it's like <sighs> I know Virgo like this so I'm just gonna say it if you're watching I love you but I have to say it because it's coming through I feel like you are sitting on your butt meditating you are kind of um, hypnotized by like the law of attraction so you're like sitting on your butt trying to like meditate your way into the outcome you want but I, it's not going to happen it's going to take a fight because we see people fighting on these um doorsteps so I feel like it's laziness like remember in the law of attraction that it's co-creation so you have to get off your butt and do something about it you can't just like namaste your way into the outcome you want you can't namaste your way out of debt or you know into the relationship you want and again that's for a very small few of you and I do want to apologize to my friend if they are listening but I had to say it that's what's coming through okay um, some of you might be, I know another Virgo, my daddy, some of you might be receiving, um, like, Social Security, and so you get to relax a little bit, and I don't see this as, like, um, a laziness in, uh, for these particular Virgos. I feel like this is, like, retirement, which is awesome. It's your time, baby. Okay, let's move on to the last one. There's an opportunity for you to live a very good life if you would assert your like I'm hearing pulpit but I know like it's not actively being a minister or actively being a priest but just sharing your thoughts on religion and spirituality with others more, being more open about that and being more vocal about that is going to open you up to like good food, good wine, good merriment with friends and family. Like it's like a vulnerability thing of um, sharing your beliefs and how you view the higher power, even like politics, religion and politics, all the things they tell you not to talk about at dinner tables. I feel like if you share them with the right people, that's like the perfect dinner table for you to be at. Like you're going to like that a lot. You, uh, 
someone might be in poor health and after a long time you get to celebrate which is good it's, it's someone you love um, you get to celebrate their return to health well I think that's it thank you so much Virgo I love you very very much and I will see you next month bye